<laughs> Alright, are we ready? <coughs> the hell is that a knife? <laughs> What's that a knife? I'm not gonna start the podcast and stab you. <laughs> I thought you wanted to do a Quentin, a Quentin Tarantino style. <laughs> Having bleeding out in the first beginning. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Screaming Rebels uh, podcast. This is Jorge Guzman with my co host, as always, Hector. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 20 20 okay I, I only know that because he posted that on Facebook that we were going to be recording episode 20 yeah sorry for the long hiatus but me and George have had a busy kind of couple months and you know things happen and now we're back and we never told anybody it's, <laughs> we do it a certain amount of times we just do it when we are able to do it yeah that's true um, but I think we're, we're going to start uh, picking this up you know um regularly again because I know myself I, I miss this podcast mm-hmm. a lot and I'm actually the one who sent Hector a message saying um, hey man is it okay if I re- can go over to your house so we can record another podcast and I said no he yeah. did and I was really <laughs> sad and I was like this, wait this isn't right because he's but I, I figured he was just getting uh, revenge because he's been asking me to do the podcast for about three weeks now and I, I kept on uh, putting it off I had um, other things and I was getting sick he, he just said it was Giants mania but I don't know yeah. Giants won the World Series. So. That was interesting. You know what? Um, this is going to be kind of our tantric kind of thing. We're going to talk about a movie, but the thing that I was talking about, Giants, that I tell other people is I actually didn't like the World Series because yeah, I hate boring. I hate shutouts. Yeah, it I was like boring. when it's it like one one. No, oh, I yeah. agree. I totally agree. I, I mean, it, it's exciting. Even if it's your own team, you want it to be exciting. And I, I couldn't even say that. On Facebook because you giant fans are fucking scary. No, only like, some of them. I was like, this this World Series sucks, and then all of a sudden some girl would be like, "Fuck you, you don't like Buster Posey." I was like, I know, <laughs> nothing, "There's nothing about Buster yeah. Posey or anybody." I was like, "It was a fucking boring ass." I like baseball, but I like yeah. baseball. It, it took me back to watching the Braves in the '90s when they were yeah, just shut I do. Out I remember that. I do remember that too. Well, you know, and, and the crazy part is. Um, since we're talking about this, I guess our sports section of the podcast. Yeah. You know, right before the World Series, they had a, there was like a fantastic playoffs. I mean, did you see any of those? Like the the yeah. championships, like those were exciting. Like yeah. when they played the Reds, they were down and they had to win. It would think it was three games straight. They won all three games, and that's when it was exciting because those weren't oh, even yeah. like shutouts. Like those weren't like you know where they were winning by a lot. No, those were close games. It was like, man, are they gonna lose? Are they gonna lose? That's what I kept on thinking. And then the same thing, when they had to jump, you know, and play the championship series, you know, um, it, it was this, like the same thing where I was just like, oh man, are they going to make it? Because this is getting really close now, you know. Um, they, were, they were really struggling. They were having a really difficult time to do it, you know, especially against the, the Cardinals. Cardinals were, Cardinals were playing. Were yeah, they were playing really good until... Detroit Bradley. was playing really good. They and were. That's why I was really disappointed yeah. of how they played in this World Series. When I heard that they won and they were going, and I was like, "This is going to be an interesting." Yeah, because game. they beat the Yankees. Yeah. like really easy. I mean, they were they were done with their playoffs. They had a lot of days to rest off. You know, but that's one of the things that people always talk about in sports is you know sometimes you have too many days off. I think the Tigers had like I want to say like five days, which is a lot in baseball. Because mm-hmm. you know, in any the the biggest break they have is the All Star break. In the All Star break, I think they have like three days off. Do so you think they, they weren't focusing on the game for those five days, just on bitches and drugs or what? No, I think <laughs> you know you get rusty, like as far as swinging the bat and making sure you hit and you know and you know doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, there's something about baseball where you do it every day. It's like muscle memory. You know, because yeah. Tigers were making errors. You yeah, know? They and were, it was not a fun. Play, it wasn't a fun series at all. No, it wasn't. So, <clears throat> I am a Giants fan. I'm glad they won. Um, I'm not a I'm not a crazy like Giants fan. <laughs> I had to make that comment to my cousin. It's, it's who's weird a crazy because it's, just, fan. it's it's baseball though, and it like I like baseball. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I don't see like the excitement like like how people like will be on Facebook and be like <laughs> this motherfucker he missed it hollow and I was like they make it sound more exciting than what the like game football. Meant. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I was like I, I saw that, but I wasn't all surprised about it. I think uh, I think the the best part was uh, my cousin. He hasn't said anything since then, but you know he's a huge Dodger fan, mm-hmm. and the whole series he's been saying bad things, nothing but bad about the Giants, and then. Uh, the Giants win, and he's like, oh, great, here we go. Now we're going to have to listen the next couple days about all these Giants fans. He was posting about the Giants at least three times a day. So finally one day I go, you know what, dude? 
The Giants won the World Series, I haven't posted a single thing. I didn't even say, I'm happy, uh, congratulations. You've posted more things for me than anybody else. I go, it's like, all I need to do is read your post. Yeah. Because you're the one who's congratulating the Giants more. <laughs> like, it, and I thought it was hilarious of how people get so fanatic with, with sports. I mean, look, if you got football going on now. Football, people, I think they go, it's just as bad it, as the way they do in Europe with their know, soccer. And what's interesting um, for people, I used to be a hardcore football fanatic. Really? And doing the podcast. Like, who was your team? San Diego Chargers. Oh, that's right. Chargers. You're San Diego. Yeah. And um, during doing this podcast, I think it's weird because I actually found space to do something productive. <laughs> and so, like, people are like, can you believe that San Diego game? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Let me go on to Yahoo Sports and see what happened that game because... I have not, I haven't watched a single game of football. I'm a highlight person. I like looking at the highlights and and reading about yeah. you know like same with with baseball. I think um, last year I watched more baseball than I did this year because baseball is almost every day and it's a three hour game. That's three hours every single day. Yeah. You know and you, you were asking me, hey, did you see any of these programs, Sons of Anarchy? No. Did you see, I don't remember which other ones, Mad Men or Breaking Bad or Dexter. I hadn't seen Walking a single Dead. one. Yeah, Walking Dead. I hadn't seen a single program in all these years because I was always doing something else, you know. Um, yeah. uh, which, I guess, uh, to, to kind of follow up on that, I've been really excited. I finally jumped on. I started watching Breaking Bad. That's a great show. So I've watched all of season one. I watched all of season one and within like two days. And it's good that you're catching up now because they're on, they're on a hiatus. Oh, they are? Yeah, so I think they won't come out. They were in the middle of production. I don't know what happened. So are they almost done then? Because they're missing their the sixth season. The, this, is the, this is the last season. So there will be season seven? No. I thought they had six seasons. Yeah, but yeah, this is where I, we're on season seven. Yeah, and okay. It's, and this is the last season. This is It's done. Oh, okay. And for some reason, they went completely stopped all. I don't know if it's protests or writers yeah. or anything else, but they're on hiatus right now. So it gives you an opportunity to try to catch up oh. and watch the whole thing. I was a fan of Breaking Bad from the first moment I saw it, and I was like, hey, what the hell is Malcolm in the Middle's dad doing in this show? And he plays a fucking Oh, you know what? Someone told me, and, and but I have forgot the whole time I watched it. Until yeah. now you're saying That's right. Yeah. I hate this. You know what? It's an amazing show. It, if anybody hasn't watched it, it I highly recommend it. Yeah, it is really good. It's intense. I mean, that's what I liked about it. It was when everything's kind of soft and and, yeah. and candy coated. This is it like kind of makes you think. How can they even put this on syndicated cable television? Well, AMC took a big risk, and I think they've they've been taking a lot of risks. What, yeah. Walking Dead. Yeah. You know, with, with this one though, it's it's and Mad Men. Mad Men's graphic. Crazy, yeah, yeah. The graphic. These are not these are not your everyday. Uh, TV shows are not, they are definitely drama, yeah. um, but there's some gruesome parts. And what's crazy about... Uh, now, I'm seeing the, the Netflix version, so I don't know if it was different on AMC, but there's like bodies that were melted, there, and, they'll say, <laughs> and they fall through the ceiling. And, Do they show that on AMC? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then. what's crazy about Matt, uh, Breaking Bad and that is what they do is they put this huge parental advisory or mature content only for about 30 seconds before the show oh, starts. Oh, wow. So it's already warning you, you know, this is not for kids, this is not intended for anything else. So they'll use all the free profanity, nudity, and everything else because they're already, they don't want to mask this show for what it's worth. I think my favorite part in the season one was um, when he goes to Tuco mm -hmm. and he's mad because he, you know, that he Tuco beat up his partner, and uh, I guess this is kind of a spoiler. This is a spoiler alert, but it, I, I'm not really giving you enough until and you see it that you'll understand. But he goes up to him, and I like how he basically says, "You're gonna give me this amount of money," and Tuco's like, "Wait." Are you talking about the part in the in the, the, the upstairs, the yeah, apartment? Yeah, uh, when they were and everything. You know and what, so that's funny because I've talked to other people about it and they're like, well, I don't think that was an important part. I was like, that's my favorite episode of all. Or it, that's the part where he, he puts that in the sack and then he goes, so you're telling me that you want $50,000 and then you bring me more meth? Yeah. And, and you just expect to walk out of here? And then he goes, well, yeah, you got it all right except for one part. And he's all, what? He goes, uh, that's not meth. And when he picks that one piece up and he throws it and there's a big old explosion, that was my favorite part because I was like, man, here's a guy who's like, you know, always geeky, always nerdy. Yeah. But he, he knew he couldn't take a gun because um, they, he knew he got searched. Yeah, search. He made a, he made an explosive that purposely yeah, looks like meth. Yeah, like that looks like meth. Yeah. Oh man, I thought that was so awesome. I don't know if it's in the first season. How far are you on the first season? So the first season ends um, where 
you know, um, they basically have this understanding with Tuchel, and yeah. Tuchel beats his, one of his guys up. There's, when, an, there's an episode, that's, that's what I was going to tell you. There's an episode, I don't know if it's in the first season or second season, where um, his, see I'm bad with names, his sidekick uh, is... Pink Pinkerton, yeah, Captain he, Cook. <laughs> he's, in the, he's in a meth house. And these kids are starving. No, he, yeah, okay. that hasn't happened yet. I'm not gonna tell you the rest. That's that's probably one of because there's certain like I love the whole season, but there's certain ones that just click in my mind that are my favorite episodes. And that's what's interesting about Breaking Bad is that they're they're all great shows, but there's always that one distinct episode that kind of yeah. takes the cake out of all of them. Yeah, that that one for me definitely. And uh, it gets did. What's, what's crazy about that's also the episode where he first shaves his head. Yeah, with Breaking Bad, what you like is it actually doesn't get brighter; it gets glimmer and darker oh. as it goes. Well, and I think that's what they're they're kind of guessing. Like, I mean, you go into the world, the drug world, yeah. and and this is what happens. For people that don't know the story, with that premise is that he's a science teacher. He finds out he has cancer, but then there's a backstory too about him being part of a huge pharmaceutical company and they created this um, drug, right? And uh, gets, they haven't got to that. They've alluded to it. Yeah. They let you know he worked in a laboratory. So, yeah, the, the watch it. I would highly recommend This is probably one of my favorite shows to watch. Crystal has never watched it. Really? I've watched it by myself the whole time. And I, I think I've watched it from when it first came out. And so that's how it's kind of, I'm kind of edgy about the first seasons yeah. and that, but... It's, it's a great show. Walking Dead is an amazing show on AMC, too. You know, I've only seen the first episode. And I, I like how... I think I can only handle one show at a time. So this yeah. show is going to be Breaking Bad until I finish it. <coughs> and then I'll probably have to go back and rewatch Walking Dead. I think Walking it's funny Dead. that... Um, I they... did play the video game for Walking Dead, though. Yeah. Is it good? Uh, it's really weird. The, the gameplay was really strange. And I didn't really care for it. So I, didn't, I was going to buy the whole season for it. Mm -hmm. um, because I guess depending on how you want the story to unfold, you can choose different options, like when you tell people things, yeah. and, and the story comes out different. But the gameplay is really weird. I wouldn't recommend it. One of the viewers that watches is Victor, and yeah. I actually, see, I actually respect people, and I used to put, like, oh my god, I can't believe what happened in Walking Dead, can you believe this and this and that? And then he said something that, he's like, I can't believe this happened. I was like, wait, that's season one. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm barely catching up. And so, because he said you that, stop I stopped posting. I stopped posting <laughs> because I don't, want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it for people. And the one I show... I like doing it. Sometimes. <laughs> That's why we have, a, we have a spoiler at the end of this podcast. This is a spoiler. This is going to be a... You know, I really don't think we're spoiling much. Yeah, and you know what? Um, and to honor our 80s childhood back days when you'd be able to get a cassette of the Disney movies... And uh, the Disney books, I had The Great Detective, The Great Mouse Detective. Yeah. I had it on book, audiobook. And so you would put the tape, and when it would tell you to switch the page, it would do a magic chime. So later on, when I'm going to edit it, I'm going to put the little magic oh, chime okay. every time we do the spoiler alert. The, the um, 80s children out there. You know, speaking of Disney, though, <laughs> how about this in the news? You know, um, uh, uh, Disney Star buying Wars. Lucas. Well, no, while uh, buying no, Lucas, Lucas films. films. Yeah. And did you see, I mean, they paid... Like a tr billion? No, they paid more than one billion. It was it was a lot. It, actually, it was a couple billion. Yeah. And it was an insane amount of money. And the first thing they said was, "We're gonna make Star Wars 7. Yeah. And it was like they knew they were like, "We're buying this whole company like, just so we can make Star Wars." Wars. And here we go. We're buying. We're doing Star Wars 7. Yeah, and you know. So is George Lucas gonna have any part of the Star Wars 7? They'll probably say if you want to, we'll let you on yeah. out of respect and stuff. And of course, they'll probably can because they know he knows the story that he can help out a lot. Well, like, he created the story. Well, yeah, but he'd be a writer and stuff now. Okay. But he wouldn't actually take full part in it. You Which know? would probably be good. Well, yeah, I'm, not, think, I'm not impressed with George Lucas's directing. You know, but he, he but he has a few things um, with the Lucas arts. It's not just that. Like there's so. Um, what, what happens to Pixar? Because Pixar was part of Lucas Films, right? So do they own the cop the rights, or did Pixar some sometime branch off by its own? Because I, thought, I knew it was an investment deal with Pixar and Steve Jobs. Yeah. That's how P Pixar was made. So my question is, like, with them buying Lucas, do they own a part of Pixar? You know, I thought that Pixar had already split a little before that. And um, and that's the reason why their movies started changing in a certain direction, a certain way. But the other thing is, you know, uh, Lucas Films just doesn't do... What they bought wasn't just for that. That's also their video games and stuff. Like, all those Star Wars games, Disney now has the rights for so that. So what happens to, like, Family Guy and all that, that, you, that Fox, you know, they would do... 
Star Wars spoofs? Are they are those gonna be pulled off, or are they gonna honor that those happened in the past? What about with Robot Chicken and all that stuff that do Star Wars? Well, spoofs are something different. I think whenever they do parodies, but they do, know? but they do a full episode of it and they do it their version. No, I think that the stuff that's in the past <coughs> is in the past. I don't think they can really um, they can't, touch. Yeah, they don't own rights on it either, or do they own the rights now for those as well? Um. Well, it depended on what the original contract was. And for people that don't know, Disney was actually bankrupt. They were, they were so close, and the only thing that actually made them survive was Pixar. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, for a long time, they were not worth a lot of money. You know what? They, and they were doing really good, but um, they've been struggling again. You know, Brave was the last movie that, that Pixar a, did, yeah. and that wasn't so good. And everybody kind of talked down about that. And they're, so they're still struggling again, you know. Um, well, I think it's but Disney is a huge... No, because I was trying to figure this out. I was trying to remember, is Disney part of Viacom or not? Yeah, they're part they of are. Them. Now, Viacom's huge. Yeah. So I was just thinking, the, what came to my thought when they bought this, I was like, oh my God, like this is like becoming a huge conglomerate, yeah. mega conglomerate entertainment industry, you know what I mean? Because Viacom already owns like ABC... You know, it owns all these other stations. Well, Disney owns ABC, too. Well, because well that's why, because they're all part of Viacom. So they own ABC, they own MTV, they own VH1. You know, they own, like, all these different Nickelodeon. stations. Nickelodeon. Yeah, they do. That's right, because that's when uh, DirecTV had the problem. Did you ever see when they yeah. had the problem with that? DirecTV couldn't come <coughs> to an agreement with their contract with mm -hmm. Viacom. So Viacom pulled all of their stations off, and the DirecTV users, like the clients, were upset because they were I like... I think it's still like that. AMC... No, no they have it. They have their stuff back. Uh -huh. Yeah. The last time I talked to someone who had DirecTV, they said that they had Nickelodeon and stuff. But yeah, they were mad for like about a month or something. They were... They didn't have anything. DirecTV had to come to an understanding quick because they understood that people were paying specifically for these stations, especially for their kids and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you talk about <clears throat> children television, I mean, other than that, you only have PBS, but you have like Nickelodeon, Nick Jr., Disney Channel. So then, I mean, that what leaves Hub, and I think that might even fall under their category. That's under Cartoon Network, I think. Uh, no, I thought that was, is it Cartoon Network or Sprout is? I don't know. Okay, because there's still a few, but I mean, it gets really weird. When you actually start looking at who belongs to what and where, it's not how you think it is. It's not like, oh, all these people are independent, and, and they do whatever they want. No, it doesn't work like that. You know, um, it, they are really tied all together. So I thought that was really, uh, that's been a huge uproar, especially the whole Star Wars happened. It's kind of like, where can you go from there? He well, did I heard, I heard the rumors sequels. about, they were talking about bringing back the original cast and be starting it from there. <coughs> so no, there's, be, you know what, there's so many rumors right now, like uh, some people said that it's going to be a spinoff from the books. So the books already like have told the tale what happens after, you know, um, the last one is the Return of the Jedi. The is there different narrators, or is it George Lucas's idea? No, so, George Lucas' ideas, and and they expanded see, on on those ideas. I kind of just did not like Star Wars after. Like the cartoons, like the Clone Wars. Remember, you yeah. have the Clone Wars. Yeah. The Clone Wars took off from that section. So there's different periods in the the Star Wars franchise where like the either the video games or the cartoons, and they branch off from there, and it's at different parts of the. So this way, it tells a different part of the story of the lives. I mean, so you don't follow. I'm not that no, much of a Star Wars I, I fan. Want, I, I like Star Wars. I just know Star Wars. Well, I like I like Star Wars when I was a kid, but then when they started doing like the New Hope and all those and how cheesy and geeky yeah, they were, yeah, I they just kind of gave up on the whole Star Wars franchise. Well, and, and that's the problem. Is like, what are they going to do now? You know, um, as far as Star yeah, Wars. Star Wars just had the Star Wars Connect that just came out, and that didn't do so well. Yeah. Um, they actually have a huge MMO, which is um, a mass multi-online player, that they were supposed to release for Star Wars. That's kind of like World of Warcraft. And uh, as far as I know, that has not been released, and that was supposed to be really big, though, and people were supposed to, like, everyone was talking about it for a long time. I'm not sure when it's supposed to be released. Let me see if I can look that up. But uh, that would be something else to see, you know, like how it, it comes out all together. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Disney's moving up. I mean, my kids watch more than half of the stuff, and they have interactive games on iTunes and that. They're actually really clever, and they're putting, they're investing a lot of time and energy on, on, on the whole entertainment aspect for children's still to this day. It's it's an interesting, I don't know, little conglomerate, like you said, for just on children's needs kind of kind of stuff and entertainment. So um. Uh, another part of why Hector and I might have taken a few, uh, a little bit of time off, other than the Giants winning the World Series, and I mean, we did do um, something really recent. We did 
Fatty Alberts, mm-hmm. and we were trying to set up for that. Well, Hector was doing more the promoting side. I was doing more the band side of getting prepared. Because two, the two bands that I'm in, we're both going to be playing that night. That's the first time that they've ever shared the stage together. That was an interesting... <laughs> that was an interesting... So, <laughs> I guess we should recap a little bit. Um, we have some footage, we'll just say right now. Um, Hector's camera didn't capture it the way he was hoping it would. Um, so, we're still trying to piece it together. We're trying to get other people's... I only had... Um, I only got to catch one band on my camera. But then, uh, my girlfriend's bloggy caught uh, quite a bit of band, so I'm going to give him that footage too and he still needs to get the footage from one other person so he's hoping with all the footage he has that he can kind of piece it together oh yeah and I got an audio file that came out really good and I need to upload that and pass it on to him so we're hoping that we have decent YouTube videos yeah and um, it was actually a a nice success Uh, we had about 40 people that showed up and um, we had we was it 40 yeah it was 40 without the bands it was about 40 people. Which is really good. And, and that's not <coughs> counting the regular customers that go into Fatty Alberts. And that Fatty was, Alberts is a pizza place. And mostly that was all by uh, word of mouth and street promotion. Uh, we did some Facebooking and stuff like that. And I learned my number one rule in life. And people might get offended. But don't, fuck, don't trust anybody on Facebook when they, you invite them. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm going for sure. You know, that's just the way it is. I think you learn, live and learn. I think the still... You know, that, that is actually a huge gripe with almost all musicians. Yeah. Someone posted one time on, on an event page, I never say I'm going if I know I'm not going. I'll say maybe if I think I, I might, yeah. but I'll never say going. Then someone one time posted, it was something, they go, and nobody put you're going if you're not really going to go to the show, or go to the show if you said you're going. They but were so pissed. The thing is, like, the thing that upset me was that um, me and Zach, uh, Zach Rodriguez from Pro Wings, we kind of combined to do this thing and um, I was really looking yeah, I had about 30 people that said they were going to go and I was thinking more of the part of it being for the bands because we were actually making we were promoting and don- donating the money that we would get to and go to back to the bands and originally that was not the plan we were going to um, try to do it so we can do more things for the podcast but then we just realized you know what these bands are traveling they're doing us a favor they're coming all the way out here let's try to see if we can kick down some stuff and, and yeah and the, the things i learned is if you give big you get big in the end so you know uh, we i respect these bands and uh, during doing this podcast i've i've met a lot of bands and it's been interesting right and you actually learn these people are more humble and and you know they give a lot more than what they actually receive and I was trying to do something to give back to the bands. So the game, the, the multi-online um, player is called Star Wars The Old Republic and it's not out yet, it's supposed to be released in fall and it has froze up my phone trying to <laughs> view this website so this is a, I guess it's not a, a very friendly... It's been compromised. It's not a friendly website. I think by accident I clicked on one of the videos and that was it, it froze everything up. I can't do anything. So. But it is so it's not released yet. But so they do have something that will be coming out. <clears throat> so Do you think Viacom had any part to do with a uh, man with the iron fist? <laughs> no. My slow introduction into the movie review. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think they have they have anything to do with that man with the iron fist. I'm trying to forget about that that movie for, for a while. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it in in, in a few minutes still. Um, any recap about what you we will say that we discovered that night um, both of us, that Fatty Alberts has really good hard cider. Did yes. you know that before? No. Because you've been there a, a few I, times. Well, I go... For I'm lunch? Not, I'm not like yeah, a that's for lunch. <laughs> you know what, if people don't know, uh, Fatty Alberts is located on 110 7th Street here in Hanford. There's one in Visalia. I recommend these guys because they give big to the to the bands too. And I, any, pe- any guys or any person that's supporting these bands, uh, kudos for them. Uh, they have a great lunch special. I'm just going to say it because I like food. Uh, you can get like a slice of pizza and a soda for like three three bucks. I mean, where else can you get that? And then unlimited salad and a pizza for uh, five bucks at lunch. So, yeah, I, I've gone out Are there. Are you been taking advantage of that salad? Yeah. Are you? Really? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like the raspberry vinaigrette that, that they have there too. Uh, you got to watch out. That's where the calories are at. Damn it. It tastes delicious. Yeah, I know it does. That's why it's a good indicator <laughs> that it's bad. 
Um, so if it tastes like shit, it's good? <laughs> sometimes. That's, that's another good idea. You know what? What's funny is I made my own hummus. Oh, you did? Yeah. Finally? With your food processor? And it fucking tasted disgusting. What did you do? I what followed, did you put? I followed the rule. I followed a recipe that they had. Well, you put garbanzo beans? Garbanzo beans, t- garlic, and I put tahini, and I put lemon juice, lemon juice and olive oil. And it, That's all you need. And I didn't, I didn't like the, the way it came out. Have you tasted hummus before? I love hummus. Like, so I buy it from Save Mart. What the hell did you do? I don't know. I don't know if I don't have the touch, or... It just tasted... It didn't taste like the hummus. I'm well, sometimes to. you need... So maybe it's over-processed. Maybe I like the over-processed hummus that uh, they sell at Save Mart. Yeah, the stuff that they put a bunch of preservatives yeah. and stuff. Well, maybe you didn't put enough um, <coughs> either lemon juice. I'll say probably lemon juice. or It's the tahini that really gives it that flavor. So if you get a good tahini, like, you can buy tahini and, like, depending, it's kind of like, um, anything, like a spaghetti sauce and stuff, right? Depending on who you buy it from, there's different ways of taste. So Trader Joe's has a pretty decent tahini. Yeah. And, um, during this whole podcast thing, I mean, because we're, what, close, we are, we are past our one year mark, um, you know, my perspective of stuff has opened up a lot, and, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound cheesy, but I'd like to thank George for that because (laughs) I've actually been very cautious now of what I eat and I'm getting close to that bound toward no soda. I've been drinking diet, but that's still bad for you because my testicles are going to get smaller eventually from drinking (laughs) it. But, you know. Well, you're not, you're drinking water right now, aren't you? Yeah, I drink water. I drink water most of the time or all the time almost. So my food today is uh, quinoa. That's what I'm I'm eating. Oh, quinoa is good. I don't know if we can show that. If that would come out or not, yeah. uh, it kind of did. Quinoa it actually a, smells pretty good. That, it's like a, a seed. It's a grain. It's a whole grain. Quinoa. I have red quinoa and regular quinoa here, and it has uh, spinach with garlic and onion. I've been, I'm convinced that garlic and onion are going to save me now. So I've been eating that with almost everything. So in some perspectives, we kind of are a little bit like the Joe Rogan uh, podcast experience where we do talk about health food. But you know what? I've learned that... I'm the only person that's responsible for my health. Well, you know, um, it's going to be, actually, it's this month. The end of this month will be exactly one year when I became a vegetarian. And so, um, right before we started the podcast, I wasn't a vegetarian. I was just eating healthy, mm-hmm. so I had to find a, a bunch of alternatives. And, um, and one of them was, um, you know, once I became a vegetarian, I, I love running. I did take a break, too. Just the way I took a break from this podcast, I, had, I wasn't running for about, I want to say, almost two months. But I just started again. For about like two weeks, like yesterday I ran four miles. Today I ran four miles. Do you miles. run with the shoes that you have on? Uh, so I have. Well, I'll show. Let's see if I can show those too. So these are Vibram <laughs> finger toe shoes. It smells like Fritos in here now. The uh, no, actually, my feet don't really smell. The, uh, <laughs> So I have run with him. The poem is... Man, There's I, I, no cushion. There is no cushion. It's like running barefoot. It, yeah. I can feel everything. I can feel the, the cushion of the floor. If I walk outside, I can feel like little... Like if you leave a staple on the floor, I can feel the staple. I'll be like, oh man, like what the heck is yeah. that? Uh, you know, you don't think about those regular no, shoes. There's like no arch support either. Huh, no, there is none. So I have ran with them uh, twice now. And one time it was okay. The problem was is I took a break and when I tried wearing these again, I, I had calluses before because I was running all the time, but well, my calluses had gone away. So when I went the second time, my feet were killing me and I had blisters on each oh. uh, uh, toe that were huge. And I was like, oh no, I need to build up calluses again. So I actually have um, Nike free runs. I don't support Nike, I hate Nike. The reason why I got the free runs was I had a $100 gift card. So I mean, I had a $100 gift card. I figured I might you as well. You know you're not going to buy it with your own money, so I might as well buy yeah, it. Yeah, that's exactly. So I, I did, um, and I put a little bit of my own money into it, but it you wasn't much more. Do you know how many Chinese more. children lost their hands making those free runs for you? Uh, I don't know, but I know it was a gift <laughs> card <laughs> that was $100, and I kind of felt bad about just uh, tossing it out the window. I wonder if Nike had suicide nets like, uh, like Apple. No, because I think theirs are lower to the ground. Yeah. Then they might use some of the, the leftover... Uh, Souls on, on the concrete. Yeah, and it's all cushiony. <laughs> they just kind of just bounce. <laughs> um, so, but my free runs are, are it's Nike's style of barefoot running shoes. Mm-hmm. What I like about it, it's kind of like a, you ever see those Domino commercials? Yeah. Where they talked about how they admit how crappy their pizza used to yeah. be, and so now they make better pizza. So Nike, in a way, has. They don't, but they went the other route. They don't admit, oh, you know, our shoes used to really jack people's feet up. So now we make these other shoes that are a lot better. They have no arch support, you know, they're barefoot running shoes. They don't do that, but what they do say is that they make these really good shoes and they're barefoot running and this is like a new fad and all this stuff. 
So those are the ones I use to build up the calluses, and then I'll have to wear these shoes again. You know? So you have to build build up kind of a callus for running. Yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, like weightlifters. You know, when they use the bar a lot, even yeah. though they wear gloves, they still develop calluses on on all their palms and stuff. You know, and it's the same thing with my feet. Like I, I need the but calluses are supposed to be good. Like you know, you're supposed to have some calluses. If you don't, if you go like my sister learned a mistake. We went walking one day. Um, and it was the same, was it the same day or the day after? I want to say it was the same day that she had got like her nails done and had a pedicure. Mm -hmm. And then she was admitting her feet were hurting. We weren't running or nothing. She was, we were just walking and I go, oh no. I go, you had a pedicure. <coughs> she was like, yeah. And I go, you know what? And that's what I told her. I go, they took all your calluses off. Your feet are going to be um, hurting. They might even be bleeding when we get back. And sure enough, there was blood through her socks. You know what I used to hate? I used to hate going to Six Flags Magic Mountain. <laughs> and, and, uh, wait, you that? Okay, no, wait. No, tell me this. No, I like Six Flags Mountain, but I hated that, like, some rides get you wet and stuff. And so your shoes would get a little damp yeah. and stuff. And so the back part of the shoe would start rubbing on my, oh. the back of the ankle. And you would have this huge blister. And driving home, you just hear something pop, and then your foot would be wet. What it the would hell? be a blister that would like I guess it would go well, a certain way. I took I took uh, certain shoes. I have weird memories of yeah, Magic Mountain. Mountain. That's how he remembers the Magic Mountain. Not no, that. I remember that, and actually riding the I would avoid the Superman ride because I was terrified. I was. Scared. Have you ever got on that? No, no that's, that's what I was trying to get to. It's a horrible I was, ride. I was so fucking terrified of it. Just the sound and everything. Yeah. And Crystal took me, and we, I went with Crystal, and I went with her brother and her friend. Yeah. And and I'm on there, and I'm like shaking and, and sweating because <laughs> I didn't know what to to expect. This and man's then, having a heart attack. And the thing goes off, and it's oh, and I was like, what? This is it? Yeah. And I got off, and I was like, the f yeah. The hell! I've been scared for five years. I looked at it. I was like, maybe this time I'll do nope, it. Yeah. Nope, not gonna do it. Maybe this time, and I finally did it. But it was funny. The other guy got off, uh, Steve's friend, and he's like, right in front of like the little kids part, puked all oh. over the kids' roller coaster. The little, it was, it was, you know. Man, we, you know, and, I guess and I'm scared of the new ones. I haven't got on any of the new ones. Well, we, and we, Crystal gets mad at that because you know how they side hang sideways. Yeah, and, yeah. And I was like. If I see them spinning in that, I was like, fuck that, I'm going to die. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you, yeah. If you, that's really <laughs> funny you said that because part of the reason why we haven't done the podcast is I've been really busy. The beginning of October, I went to Six Flags. Yeah, <laughs> I just went to Six Flags. And we, my wife How's and their went. Halloween part? Because I've been there on Halloween and all they do is close off Gotham City. And okay, it sucks. No, okay, so this is the, the, the stupidest thing I think about Six Flags. So we went. And um, Six Flags in the month of October uh, closes for the regular days. So they're not open Monday through Friday. They're only open on the weekends or a holiday. So we went on Columbus Day, which is to them is considered a holiday. Mm -hmm. So we went on a, on a holiday, but there's no Friday night. There's no, they don't do nothing. There's no zombies, no nothing. Nothing no more? No, they do, but on Saturday and Sundays. We uh -huh. went on a Monday. And I was like, but you got to be kidding me. Like, you guys yeah. are, you know, closed. You know, Tuesday through Friday, you're only open these three days, and you can't do nothing on this Monday? I think Universal Studios actually has a good horror night now. Well, not only this, um, they closed at 6 o'clock on us that day. Really? The only thing that was good, so the only thing that saved us, was it was dead. I've never been to Six Flags when it was that empty. I kid you not. We went on, like, some of their main rides, like, let's say Goliath. And you were done by half of the... No, 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 like, we, we went on the ride. And there was nobody in line. We could actually say, hey, can we stay here? And they would say, yeah, there's no one in line. Just stay on. And we just stay on the ride and just go on again. That's how dead the park was. Wow. And I was like, it was, it was the most bizarre <laughs> thing I had ever seen. Like, you know, I've never seen. It was like, like it was a special day or something where like only the workers were allowed. And that was it. Nobody else. Like, you know, because the, the whole park was like dead when we went. So we went on every single ride except for two. Superman was one. And it's not because we were scared. I had already been on it. it was, I told them, like, it's not a scary ride. The reason why we didn't go is because um, we were finally running out of time. Because we took time, you know, to have lunch and walk around. So, and, my and Lex Luthor. Have you seen that one yet? The ones that, like... No, no, no. So we got on all those. So Lex Luthor is their newest ride, though. Lex Luthor is... Um, so it's, it's, it's like Superman, isn't it? Yeah, in a way. But Lex Luthor's hooked up to Superman. So Superman shoots you up, and you ride it forward, going up in an arc, and then you slide backwards down. Okay, Lex Luthor, what it is, is you have this thing, and it lifts you just straight up, and it's hooked onto the side of Superman. So it lifts you all the way to the same place, but it lifts you straight up. It holds you there, and then the thing just goes click, and it opens up, and you just fall straight down. So that one, 
Yeah, fuck that. The, the whole time we were thinking, okay, Malika was a good sport. She said she was gonna get on the rides. We're on Goliath, and as we're going up Goliath, I'm looking around. We're seeing a bunch of things, and I and I turn around. And I go, hey, you see that ride over there? And I'm with a big old cheesy grin. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I go, that's the ride we're getting on next. That's the one we said we were gonna get on. And she looks and she goes, oh no, we're not getting on that ride. <laughs> and I was like. But you just said, like, we're going to get on the Lex Luthor ride. Like, she had just said, we're going to get on the Lex Luthor ride. But we realized, oh, well, we'll get on this one first, and then we'll just jump into that line. Like, we were going to jump back and forth. Well, I was going to ask you, because um, <laughs> before, when I used to go, I, I usually go on Halloween and that, because, uh, I don't know, we would just end up going there at that time. Was uh, Colossus riding backwards or not? Yeah, it was. Okay. So Colossus still rides backwards. So I think get mean ass whiplash from going backwards. Yeah, I thought I was like, oh man, this don't feel good, and then with all the bumps. Did you do it at night or? <laughs> my fun. I love old roller coasters, and I love Colossus at night backwards. Well, no, because see, it closes at six. <coughs> oh, that's right. But so on Friday nights, it closes either at midnight or one in the morning. And so the way it works now is, that I think it's about eight o'clock. The park when it gets dark, they turn off all the regular lights. They only have special lights on, and then um, zombies start walking out. Oh. So as you're walking the park, there's a bunch of monsters just walking around the whole park, like the whole time, and all the rides are still. That's kind of cool because when I used to go, they would just close Ar uh, Arkham, or no. Gotham City. So that stays, So all the rides stay open now, and then they just have the and it tells you like the zombies start walking around, and that's like what makes it creepy. I think the zombies might even jump on the rides with you. Like it just it, it might be your luck that you're sitting right next to a zombie. <laughs> So that is, it is kind of cool. Uh, Universal Studios this year, I looked it up because we were debating if we wanted to yeah. go there. They actually did, I think it was their very first time, Universal Studios always picks a horror movie. And, and that's the Silent Hill. Run. And this year they did Silent Hill. Yeah. Yeah, so I was very excited about that. Uh, you know? My friend's writer one, he said he liked it. He, he liked said, it? Said, well, yeah, they, they said they took uh, main scenes out of, uh, like, Silent Hill, I think has like four or five games. It's not really that great of a movie, though. No, but it's the video games. No, they didn't take it from the movie. They took it oh, from the video game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they picked all these video I games. I remember playing the first one. I was like, are you kidding me? All I get is a fucking flashlight? <laughs> yeah, and so that, again, that's what they did. So they wanted to recreate that. So they actually went and picked scenes out of the video game. And so they said as you were walking the park, there was like whole sections where it was like a certain room that you would have to walk into. And of course they had Pyramid Head because everybody always knows him. Yeah. You know, and then um, they the picked, nurses. And so they picked, yeah, a lot of those things were around the park. And that's what made it so cool. And of course, Universal Studios is kind of like being on a Hollywood set. So they have like high-end production. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that was I, one of the things. I remember going one year and they said that they were going to turn the... Because they had the back lot. Yeah. And they were going to turn the house where they filmed Desperate Housewives, that uh, Hysteria Lane. Yeah. They were going to turn into the Freddy Coo Elm Street oh. for Halloween. But I don't know if they ever did it. Huh. I, I don't know. I and didn't then, follow uh, that. My favorite one that I used to go to when I was a kid was uh, Knott's Berry Farm. And Knott's Berry Farm... I've never been there. Before Universal Studios did it, they used to close. So you'll go normal hours, and yeah. as soon as 7 o'clock comes, they kick out all the normal people. <laughs> and it's only 13 and over that can go in. Oh. And the whole park is horror-based. So they have the Crypt Keeper town uh, in there, and they have mazes, and they have like a haunted uh, ghost coach that... And then have people chasing you, and it's pretty terrifying. I mean, I've been there, and like I went with my cousin, and she peed her pants and everything else <laughs> because they pop out of nowhere, and then they have fog machines throughout the whole place. Wow! So you can't see where you're going. So it's it's like a and they, they call it not scary. scary farm, not scary farm. They call it. Oh, okay. And it's totally and it's totally different from. And um, my favorite one was there's a Indian ghost teller, and so uh, you'll go and they had it's a 3D hologram. Uh, show right and so you'll sit and the Indian will tell you oh you know you're sitting on an Indian burial ground and he'll throw stuff and all of a sudden this magic starts showing up and uh, cowboys start coming out from the crypt and he's like he's telling you a story and the story is actually coming to flourish in front of you and it's, oh. it's really scary and it's yeah. done really good and I haven't gone there in a long time what, now what do they call those would it be like a, a 4D movie is it kind yeah, of it's like, like a four-dimensional okay. kind of thing. And I, you know what, I've only seen, uh, I think I've only seen like three 4D movies. Mm -hmm. But those are like, they're really interesting. Like they feel really good. Like just visually, and like you're saying, to see the stuff actually happening and mm -hmm. like to feel it. Like I know Disney now has one. They replaced the whole Michael Jackson one they had for years. And they put the Honey, uh, I Shrunk the Audience. Yeah. Did you ever see that one? No. 
Well, on um, I will just say <coughs> one part because I don't want to ruin it if you ever if you ever go because there's a bunch of exciting things, but there's this part where like I think it's like rats are passing through and um, there's wind that passes oh, through your yeah. feet, so it feels like there's rats passing through the. They had that one in Universal Studios with the Simpson ride. Oh, you go okay. Into the Simpsons town and everything else, and then all of a sudden you'll go into a large land, and all of a sudden you saw uh, donuts and stuff like that. <laughs> You know, you'll go through Mr. Burns' uh, thing and everything's black, glowing and the, the the bottom of the floor kind of moves like ooze and stuff and it turns bright green and stuff like that. See, that's cool. I've been to one in Grand America and I think theirs was Top Gun at the time. I don't know if they still do it or not. I haven't been to Grand America in years, but um, it was I've Top... I've never been there. Or no, I think... No, wait, I'm sorry. It wasn't Top Gun. It was Days of Thunder because they... Uh, uh, Great America is owned by Paramount. Paramount yeah. So they do all the Paramount stuff. So the Top Gun's one of the rides, that's like Batman. It's like the equivalent. Um, uh, but it's Days of Thunder. Do you remember that one, that cheesy mm -hmm. one with Tom Cruise and stuff? And that's the one where you're sitting in a chair. On well, Top Gun too. Does Paramount own Tom, uh, Tom Cruise yeah. or what? No, they don't own Tom Cruise. <laughs> you said yeah. No, <laughs> Scientology owns Tom Cruise, <laughs> not Paramount. So the other thing I got to do, um, and you, you were wondering what I had in my hand. Hector thought I had a knife. Thought I was gonna stab him right before the podcast. Because oh, we're gonna talk about Quentin Tarantino. I thought he wanted to do this Pulp Fiction or uh, Reservoir Dog style and have me wounded. Yeah, no. Is uh, as I got a, I got a, a light, a flashlight. LED. You know? uh, an LED flashlight. It was a, I guess it was a, a birthday gift, but it was a. If you can see right there. Where, oh, where Winchester it? Mystery House. Oh, this is, place is cool. If anybody hasn't gone there, I've actually been there. It's actually a real house that was built by the Winchesters. Yeah, so um, we got. Uh, I, I haven't. I need to go on the regular tour, but Malika got me tickets, and I went with my two sisters, and we did this for my birthday. They open up. They have a fright night. Uh, oh, they, they do. do. So we went to their fright night. So <coughs> this is the, it's called the flashlight tour. Now you get to keep the flashlight. That's part of the thing. Cool. Yeah. So we each get a flashlight, and then they give you headphones. They give you this little thing that's like your tour. It's an audio tour instead of someone walking around with you. So you walk into rooms, and some rooms will tell you to push certain numbers. And the whole time you're looking at the rooms, you only have the flashlight. There are no lights on. So if everybody were to turn their flashlights off at once, you'd be screwed. Because there's a, for people that don't know the Winchester houses, there's rooms that lead, or doors that don't lead to anywhere. Well, the wind, so yeah, so I guess um, if you're not in California, you've probably never heard of this, uh, it, but everyone in California pretty much knows this. In San Jose, it was owned by the Winchester family, uh, which are the ones that make the rifles, like you said. They actually make other things. I didn't know that until that day. Like they made roller skates and ice skates. With guns attached to them. Yeah, with guns attached. So um, her husband, so what happens is a bunch of family members die within like a month and a half, like five family they, members. They believe that it was a curse because of the bullets and everything else. Yeah, so uh, Sarah Winchester, which was the, the wife of the, the husband that ran the place, she goes to um, like a, a medium, you know, and, and asks her, hey, you know, what's wrong? She says, well, your family's cursed. And the only way to appease these spirits, you know, that are causing all this harm to your family is by building on your house. And you have to continue to build. So the crazy part is that like, you'll go in there, and I guess like they tell you what was the original house. And the house just keeps on expanding and expanding. And she starts to run out of room. So she starts making cabinets that you open that are just a solid wall behind the cabinets. You know, um, like you said, there's, there's the famous door to nowhere. Like you open up the mm -hmm. door and actually, like if you were to try to walk through the door, you just fall straight down. You'd actually fall maybe to your death. It's only like two stories high. But if you're not expecting it, you would just fall straight like into the concrete. So uh, things like... There was one room where they said this is the most windows in the house and you look and there's crazy like there's like the whole place almost seems like it's uh, made of entirely of windows and they said they added so many windows they added actually one more and the window is in the ground that like, you can't walk over it like because you will fall through like there's a window in the ground like if there's shutters you take off the shutters and you open it so we went that and I guess part of their Friday night is they do well, they call it a corn maze I'm not sure why I saw no corn and there was no maze <laughs> For people that don't know, corn and maize is actually the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid Mexican joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, if, uh, Has anybody else said that? Or no, I've never heard person? anybody say that. Maize in Spanish is corn. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> so, um, they, uh, what it is is you, you go through, and it's supposed, to, so it's supposed to take 40 minutes to go through this thing. We did it like at 20, because we were, I, was, I was convinced that we're going to get the hell out of this thing as fast as we can. And it's kind of like that, like you go through the thing, and people are, are um, to scare you, you know, and they're mm -hmm. set up. And I think I got scared maybe twice really good. 
I will say you would have enjoyed it. They had some really great costumes and, and they set up the rooms perfect. Like there was one room that was like a butcher shop and it looked great. Like they had chains hanging and like, you know, like dead animal parts like like over and they had people walking around, like you know, like they were cutting things up and it, what's funny is um, I'm gonna actually admit something. I took the kids trick or treating and there was a haunted house. You took them to something like and that. And I'm actually a fucking big scaredy cat. You are? Yeah. I but you only do horror films. And I love horror movies. That's the thing. Like, I can sit. I can make a scene. But I don't personally like to be fucking scared myself. So then you would not have like. So this was. So Crystal really went in because Nikki wanted to go into the haunted house. Yeah. And you hear butchering and everything else. And she said she should. You know, the door open. He saw something coming at him. He fell on the floor and crawled out. <laughs> <and left her. laughs> And then now uh, Michael Myers, well, he was Michael Myers yeah. dressed, but he had a chainsaw like the guy. Oh, so yeah. he had no chain on it. But oh, he but he made the wait. noise. It, it was that normal house. So yeah. they went, you went through the garage wow. and you went out through the kitchen. And so he would wait for you and then crank it up and then chase people. Yeah. And so Nikki was just standing there watching him. And he was, he was <laughs> as scared as he was. He was like entertained the whole time he's like and and then crystal's like oh my god the guy has a chainsaw he, does it and she's like does he really have chains and like the guy's all Ugh, and he's like no not really i don't want to hurt nobody and then you go back and like, it was like he went to normality to tell you that not to be scared there's no chain on it but then he went back to being like the yeah, character yeah. Well, he, he wanted to make sure that people knew or yeah. people to call the cops on him yeah. um so there was actually the chainsaw thing at the end of this it was at the very end uh, the crazy part was there was two chainsaws. We didn't know that till it got to the end. So I guess if you missed the first one, the other one was gonna get you. you. And so it was. I have to say they did a very good job on that. Yeah. It was. I, I didn't linger too long on a place, even though I wanted to, because I knew that somebody was gonna come and scare the crap out yeah, of me. I'm, I'm a huge chicken shit about hor uh, haunted houses and stuff. I just want to go through them as quick as possible. You know, Malika uh, uh, in the <laughs> end decided that. She was like, this is a bad idea. Like, I don't think I can do this. And I said, you know what? If you're not going to be comfortable, don't do it. Because I don't want you to have nightmares and be scared later. So she did it. She, hang, she hung up back. See, what's, what's weird about me, though, is I hate the anticipation of scary things. You're even like serial killers and stuff. Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. Okay, like, but this is what I mean. Like, scary things where people are set up to scare you, Yeah. I don't like. But I've gone through houses where serial killers are made and, yeah. and stuff like that. And everybody else will be fucking scared. And to me, I'm like intrigued and I'll stay in there and I want to look more and stuff. And they're like, you're fucking crazy. They're like, wait, you're scared of something that somebody made up and nothing really happened. Yeah. Instead of a place that somebody fucking got butchered. And you're like, oh, let's just stay here for a bit and look around and stuff. Like, I was like, I don't know what it is about me. That's not scary to me because I know they're not going to fucking come back. But everybody else has that sense of, oh, yeah. oh there's some evil here and stuff like that. And I, I get it too, but I don't want to be fucking... You know, I think you would have liked the, the oh, flashlight yeah. tour yeah. part then. Because there was a few scary parts in there. Like, they had some people in there and stuff. But there weren't many. Um, but then it, the thing is, like, the, the whole stories they gave you, each one was a ghost story. So it was people retelling their accounts, like tour guides, saying something that happened oh, yeah. in the house. So they were like, you know, there was this one time where I was in this room, and all of a sudden I heard something, and I turned around, and I knew where it was, yeah. but then nothing happened. There's a place here, um, they did, uh, Unsolved Mysteries even did a segment on here back in the 80s. I didn't even know if people showed a YouTube of it. Uh, the Bastille is an old uh, prison place, and they turned it into a club. Hmm. And it's not a club anymore, it's closed, but they used to actually hang the people in, inside for the crimes. This is like old Western yeah. style thing. And um, one day, um, a couple, well, it was years back, um, I needed needed money and I kind of uh, had a tab and, and so they let me work there as a beer back. <laughs> and so, you know, they had a cellar where the beer was at and I would have to bring down. <laughs> How much could your tab be? You know, let's not go into details about something. Was like this that. one of those things where I was like, you couldn't go home because, so they made you work that whole night? No, I worked a couple nights there. <laughs> so, so, but um, I was alone one day, and they said, uh, can you help us do inventory? <laughs> you and this is, minimum this, wage. This, <laughs> yeah, no, this is after the the thing was done. I stayed there for a How could you get your tab that high? Wouldn't they have cut you off way before that? No, because the guy knew me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like a, like a gimmick, like the mafia or yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, basically. And that's probably why it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> anyways, so I'm, I'm putting the beers away, right? Yeah. And um, there's nobody there with me. Uh, the people are, are on the opposite end. 
because you have to go through corridors and stuff. And I feel like this cold, sudden chill, right? And I shit you not, the door closes, like slams hard. And I was basically stuck in there for like an hour before somebody found me. And it was the most terrifying shit that's ever happened to me because you could feel and sense like the degrees, like people say it gets colder and stuff. Oh, but you yeah, could yeah. feel it. And it was like, it was not a comfortable feeling. Like whatever was in there was kind of like a menacing thing. I guess in a way I keep on feeling like someone's going to text message us and tell us that we're doing something wrong or saying something wrong, but... We're not live this time. <laughs> yeah, this time we're not live, uh, so if you're catching this, it will be definitely pre-recorded. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to keep on working a little bit more on the podcast. We only have a year with it. I've, we've been hearing a lot of other podcasts, and there's still some more things we would like to do. One thing we've got to comment today is that we have local bands. Um, we've done like small little interviews and stuff. We haven't done anything yet. We know we would like to. Uh, part of the reason it's hard is just life in general. I mean, you know, Hector has a family and to get people, I mean, we'd have to shove the band in this, this little room here with the bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gets harder and we do want to expand, we do want to become bigger and, you know, if we've asked in the past for donations, things don't happen. Yeah. Um, but we do band, have bands that want to participate, yeah. so we know we have to try to do something. And I know we're growing. And it's, it's kind of been a positive thing doing the concert ben- the concerts and everything else. And we're going to keep trying to figure out other venues and stuff to experiment and stuff. And um, me and George have discussed, and he's the drummer. So basically, we're going to go ahead and uh, section these podcasts under music. And uh, we're going to go ahead and if you, and it makes sense because uh, Dave Fontenot, who's been on here, is a drummer. Uh, Juan Hernandez is the lead singer and guitar for Kinship. Yeah, Ian McCarthy, who we have for the video game podcast, is not a musician, but... Yeah, he's you know, probably the only one that, that's not a musician. But I'm pretty sure he's an aspiring <laughs> musician yeah. if he hears this. So, you, you know, we're going to go ahead and continue. And um, that was one of the positive things from doing the, the concert is that we got to actually... And yeah. the for people that don't know, the band community is actually very closely knit. Because for the people that showed yeah. up there, I think some of them were actually staff members of Warrior Records that came all the way from Visalia oh, really? to know support that. Bear and Pro Wings. And then we had the band uh, Orchard. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but they were there yeah. uh, supporting Pro Wings as well. So. so I was trying to tell you earlier, I didn't get to finish telling you, but the really interesting part is we met a guy named Jeremy who's really cool, really supportive of the podcast and the bands. Now, the, the reason why I was saying it was funny is because after one of the shows, like, I, I came off and I was talking to people, and he was like, hey, and he started talking to me, and then I realized I recognized him. I had seen him at the very first time Sci-Fi Caper played at the Salad Door, and he was there, and he was really, like, you know, good response, and, you know, gave us a lot of good comments. So he was like, hey, I didn't know you did this, and I go, did what? He goes, the Screaming Rebels thing. So that's why I knew he was talking to you, because he was mm-hmm. like, I was like thinking, well, no one has yet said here that I'm part of the Screaming Rebels. So he was like, man, I, like this is so cool. Like, I had no idea you were in a band, and then you did the podcast. And I was like, man, like this is so weird. Like, where did this... And so that's when... But we knew each other already. So he was like, if I would have known this, though, I would have... Like, we would be doing more things. Yeah. So we got a lot of good feedback. And he says, even around here locally, like, he would definitely try to help the podcast and try to help it expand. And hopefully we will get more bands and stuff um, <coughs> on the podcast. And do more live things um, if we possibly can. We're getting better with it too. Part of the thing is that we really don't know what we're doing. Yeah. So sometimes when we film things or we, we, um, we get the audio. Something. Yeah, and then it, it sounds like crap. I, and I have learned that if I'm going to be a cameraman, <laughs> I must be behind the camera at all times and checking the angle and what the, what's going on. Because unfortunately with the screen, with the thing, I was so worried about everything. And I want to make sure everything was, yeah. I was running around and didn't catch that there was some vibrational issues with the floorboards, so the cameras are a little bit shaky. We did um, do some raffles that day, too. We raffled off, uh, you know, Sci-Fi Keeper and Pro Wings were both part of a compilation that was put out by 20 Sided Die Records. I have a few copies left. What are the Dungeons and Dragons fanatics? They are. That's where it comes from. Yeah, that's it's The 20 Sided Die comes from the Dungeons and Dragons. I, I, I'm on one today with Maze and 20 Sided Dice and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hector's definitely focused. I have a dry uh, sense of humor. If uh, <laughs> So they are huge Dungeons & Dragons fans, and that's where it, the, the record label comes from. So I have a few copies left. I mean, if you guys want to send an email out, I'm more than glad to send it out. Uh, I know I should have brought one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I was supposed to either upload the songs for Hector, 
or bring him one, which I did neither of yet. Um, but I remember my bag of tricks, <laughs> which sometimes I do forget as well. I've been very good about doing that now too. Just I just carry this with my drums now. My bag of tricks carries my electronics and stuff, my, my flip camera and, and what I might need out on the, <laughs> out on the road. But, you know, uh, we did, we raffled that and there was a lot of good bands on there, which includes also the Hoot Hoots. Which I'm glad, because I'm going to put a plug in. The Hoots are coming back, and I want to say it's December 5th um, to Fresno. And Sci-Fi Caper will be playing with them. We played with them before. I will say that this is one of the the most fun I've ever had at a show, a local show, hmm. is with the Hoot Hoots. So if you can make it out, I really love the Hoot Hoots. If you can hear them on the internet, check them out. The Hoot the Hoots? Hoots? The Hoot Hoots. Like, yeah. like an owl hoots, right? So if yeah. you don't know, it's H O and H O O T S. Twice. Yeah, that's right, twice. And so when they even came, they even had like uh, these outfits that they made that have look like there's a bunch of feathers. They look like they're dressed like owls. And <laughs> it was it was totally cool though. I was totally fine with it. It was some of the most fun I've ever had at a show, you know. I thought they were fantastic. Um, what type of style of music do they play? Uh, it's definitely very close, <coughs> similar to like Sci-Fi Keeper. Like it's, it's uh, poppy, you know. It, I mean, it's like pop rock type of twee. Um, it's, it's a guy that sings most of the time. There was a female that sang sometimes, and then they had keyboard sometimes. And she did a lot of dancing. She was kind of like a, being on a free spirited kind of. No, I was thinking the mighty mighty Bostons. Ah. <laughs> the guy that's just paid just to dance. Oh, that's she, right. So she she was definitely <laughs> dancing most of that night. So that was uh, a lot of fun. So I just wanted to say you know that's part of our uh, the music portion. And so talking about music, I mean there is a uh, one of. Uh, I think more maybe Hector's artist that he likes, the RZA from Wu Tang. Don't knock his music. Don't knock his acting ability. I'm, no, I'm gonna knock, knock his movie too. Uh, this is the spoiler per portion of the podcast. This is uh, insert, so, insert this now, Hector. So actually today, ring, yeah. actually today, uh, me and George, see. We probably knew something was bad about this movie because me and him both procrastinated about watching this movie, yet we knew the podcast was going to be about it. So we had to see the movie. We had to go watch the movie. And we both saw it alone. Both saw we, it alone. We should have saw it together. We yeah. did it. It was funny because then Crystal told me she's we like... We really should have saw it together. Yeah. Crystal's like, so she's like, was there another creeper or were you the only creeper in the, in the theater? <laughs> and I was like, no, there's some. There's actually a large portly guy in front of me yeah. and he he had like the large popcorn in that and she goes how'd you feel about that i was like well he could have sat next to me and shared some popcorn but he didn't. <laughs> i said but i'll say i'm fine like crystal like oh i've people, gone to the movies by myself yeah, yeah. I, i'll go to the movies by myself if nobody wants to go oh, i'm yeah. like well i'll go by myself i love movies enough i've never to go. like when i got out of a bad relationship that was the first thing that i learned how to do is like go to the movies by yourself when because like when I, I used to work night shifts and stuff, and so yeah. there, people wouldn't be able to do stuff with me. And I was like, well, that sucks. They're, they're either working or I'm asleep. What can I go do by myself? And I'll go watch movies. Yeah. Well, uh, I learned when uh, I was uh, dating a girl and I would be hanging out in Fresno. I was from Mendota. I had nothing to do all day. And then at the time, the Clovis Theater... And um, what is it? The, the United guess, Artists one? The United Artists I've been there. But the one that, well, now they, I think it's like 350. It's a 350 in theater. Like they show all the old movies. Yeah. But back in the day, they would show independent movies. Yeah. So I saw like Donnie Darko I saw, there. I saw the uh, 1408, that Stephen King. Oh, one. yeah, I remember that. I saw that one there. But that wasn't an independent movie. That, it was the only place showing it. Really? Yeah. Man. Well, it's like this movie. So. Originally, I was going to try seeing the midnight showing mm -hmm. of The Man with the Iron Fist. This should have been another indicator that this is not that good of a movie. <laughs> there were no midnight showings of The Man with the Iron Fist. Okay, so let's just break down this movie. Uh, the movie was directed by Riza. It is presented by uh, Quentin Tarantino, which made us want to go watch it. But who wrote the movie? Who wrote it was Eli Roth and the Riza. So what has Eli Roth done before? Um... Not that great of movies. He's done uh, Hostel 1 and 2 and Cabin Fever. Okay, are those the only three movies he's written or directed? I think he's written for other ones. But directed, these are the only? Those are the only three okay. that I know of. And he did not direct The Man with Iron Fist. RZA took it yeah. upon himself to direct this whole movie. And you know what's funny is that I remember rumors back like three years back. Yeah. Because I think this movie took forever to make. Oh. Um, but I heard that Eli Roth was supposed to direct this one. Oh, wow. I wonder what happened. And then all of a sudden they said RZA was directing it. He must have had some like fault. Like he must RZA must have 
been very because I remember about what he wanted. when Hostel Two came out. Yeah. Eli Ross said, I'm fucking tired of everybody thinking I just make horror movies. I want to do something completely different and out of aspect of somebody wouldn't think I was doing. And all of a sudden, and they said he, was gonna do a kung, he said he was going to do a kung fu movie. No, actually, Cabin Fever was done first before the Hostel movies. Before? I thought it came after the first Hostel. No, it was really? Cabin Fever, Hostel, Hostel 2. Oh, wow. And I like the first Hostel. I thought it was kind of a unique, kind of twisted Yeah, we story. talked about this. I've never yeah. seen any of those. <laughs> and so, um, Cabin Fever was campy and raunchy and, and kind of one, of one of those silly movies. You know, I remember Hollywood putting a lot of money into um, promoting Cabin Fever. Well, That's what happened, I remember that movie. What happened with Cabin Fever is he made it by himself. He financed it for himself for about a million dollars. So then, wait. That he borrowed from his dad who's a doctor, who's a psychotherapist, and from other people. So then, how did they get so much promotion out of that? What happened was that he took it to Sundance, and people had a huge cult following about it, oh. and liked it. And so Miramax... Decided to release it. Miramax right bought there. it for about $2 million. And that was the first small budgeted movie ever at that time to be bought, who was made under, I think, under a $1 million, yeah. and was bought for $2 million. Oh wow! So he I'm became. I'm pretty sure they got their return. And so he became a big. It was the Cabin Fever is a big cult movie, like underground cult movie. Yeah, people yeah. Like. And so with that, you know, he. Um, I don't know if you guys ever seen an old show called Boy Meets World. It's like back in the yeah. days. Yeah, I remember The that. best friend of that Corey? Is Corey Savage, his best friend. Yeah. He's actually the lead uh, star in, in Cabin, Cabin Fever. Fever? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So the movie was made super cheap. It's funny, it's hokey, but there's no fucking kung fu in it. Okay. So that's what I want to come to. So, so the man with the iron fist, is that funny or hokey? Or it was campy? fucking hokey and campy. <laughs> and not in a good uh, hokey and campy way. I, I missed like the first five minutes of the movie. And I you guess, didn't miss much. Yeah, so well, I guess you said at least Quentin Tarantino kind of... Um, okay, so the, the first movie. part of the movie is not the movie. It's a, it looks like a trailer. But Quentin Tarantino comes out and does the little duck lips that he usually does. And, and he's like, um, oh, you know, check out my brother. I think he said his brother's uh, new movie. And he's like, the RZA's. Before you enjoy the new movie by the RZA, An Animal with the Iron Fist, uh, here's a little sneak peek of my new movie, Dango Unchained, coming out on December 25th. Also, and he so, does a trailer of his own. And so it was an extended version of the of oh, Dango Unchained. Man. See, I which was, that. I wanted to see that. Yeah, I want to see bloody, Tarantino's. It's like the bloody trailer. Oh wow! So um, it's and it has that big red MA trailer thing that you usually don't see. You know, we talked about this right before we we started recording. But like I said, Quentin Tarantino can make movies. He knows how to make a movie. Oh yeah. I wish that he would get a good screenplay and make a movie, so this way he can at least get some sort of notoriety. Instead of, I mean, Jingle looks like it's going to be good. But it doesn't seem it's like a fun movie. But it doesn't look, yeah, like it's up to like the par of oh, like Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think those I, two movies still have to be his his poly. I mean, I, I don't know if Kill Bill. I don't him. Kill Bill Volume yeah. One. And I don't two. know if it bothers him. Yeah. But to me, and maybe to other people, I think he's one of the best writers in film right now. Like if you watch his dialogue and the complexity of his characters. It bothers me that he doesn't try to actually make that boost to at least get an Academy Award nomination for one of his movies. No, but I think he has to try a little harder because he's not going to get nothing yeah. with Jango well, either. with a bunch of stone potheads, you know, yeah. like Eli Roth and, and, and RZA. RZA. And so RZA did not have no dialogue <laughs> in his movie whatsoever. Like the way I'm talking, like this would be his serious voice in case of something was happening in an urgency. Well, it wasn't just that. I mean, like none of the characters, like yeah. the way he wrote the screenplay, the only person... The, we yeah. both agreed that we liked was Russell Crowe. All the characters were basically one-dimensional characters. Yeah, Russell Crowe was really good. And I have to say, best, he was really yeah, good. Yeah, the best way I could explain it to, like I tell George, is like, you take your first class in film school, and they said, you're going to write your first story ever, and go, and Riz is like, I'm making a movie out of this, dog. I'm making a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was watching, uh, what was, <laughs> like that, what was that movie again? Method Man and Red Man, when they are in high school? It was like that. Oh, hi. Yeah, that, that's kind of what this was. It was not very good at all. Um, you know, it, it's supposed to be about uh, this guy, the blacksmith. What's his, is his name just blacksmith? Yeah. 
So it's the blacksmith. The blacksmith. Yeah, his name's actually the man with the iron fist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, so he's the blacksmith, <clears throat> and he's in love with this girl who works at a brothel, and it's kind of one of those stories where, okay, he's trying to raise money to get her out. But, and, you know, um, you've seen that in other movies. And that, so the whole idea is the story itself doesn't sound that bad when you talk about it, or the trailer, yeah. you see it. Yeah. It's the way they executed the, it. The trailer is actually what made me want to be like, oh, that looks like a kind of a cool movie. A movie because that we would like. it always showed the slow motion still. Oh, yeah. Right? What, what you don't get is that what I don't understand is the choreographic martial arts moves were so fucking horrible. They were really bad. It looks like they, they it, looks like, it looks like a power. Somebody. It looks yeah. like a Power Ranger show. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. Um, you had so then the other story is you have a guy named X Blade, which we're not sure why he got the name X Blade because his father. His father is called the Golden Lion. And, and, the, and they're from the Lion Clan. So each one has a fighting style, and the style is named after the clan. So there's the Lion Clan, the Tiger Clan, the Rodent Clan, the... Was there a Rodent Clan? Yeah, remember the rats? Oh, and then there was the, a Wolf Clan. There was a Wolf Clan. The Geminis, the Wolf Clan. Yeah, so, um, but, so the father's Golden Lion. You never see him because he's already killed by Silver Lion. A Silver and Lion. Silver Lion, um, I guess, was taken under gold, like Golden uh, um, Lion, took him under his wing, and decided and raise him as his, as his, his own son. son. Yeah. And so Silver Lion and X. And see, well, the like way brothers. we're talking about it, it sounds like a great movie. It does. It almost does. Yeah. And so Silver Lion, so he kills the father, and um, X Blade's trying to stop him. And Silver Lion is actually going to steal money from the Emperor, and yeah. no, no, that this is bad. And if you want to see the most hokiest thing in the world is uh, X-Blade and his girlfriend in love and in tangent and they're like making love and they're and then all of a sudden you see these little Asian guys running at the thing and they're like Master! Master! <laughs> and then they give him the little thing and it says your son, your father was murdered and it's just three words and they have all this, it's like there's no Ex no, no explanation yeah. or yeah um yeah, it's so, <laughs> so fucking hokey. They, I mean, yeah, the other part that I didn't like, and I told um, mm -hmm. Hector, definitely was the pacing. The pacing was way too fast. Yeah. It was way quick. Like, I wanted him to slow down. I wanted him to, to just take a break and say, okay, this is the story. It doesn't have to be just a gore movie. Yeah, so the story never develops. So he has some kind of story that's going along, and you kind of get it through bits and pieces. It's not all at once. So, like, you find the background story about the blacksmith. You know what I didn't like either, and for people, is there's a wrestler on here by the name of Bautista. Bautista. <laughs> okay, what I never understood, if it was a time period movie, the tattooing that he had was not time period. Yeah, no, it was tri He had tribals, and then he had, like, a lotus flower, which might have been, but, like, the ink style. But he had cherry blossom. And then he had a Tupac nose ring. That they never took off. Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. I didn't notice it until the very end. Yeah. They have this close up of his face, and I was like, why does he got a nose ring? Yeah. <laughs> like, and why would you? If he had a nose ring, then you might as well have showed it the whole movie. They don't show it to the very yeah. end. There's this close up, and I was like, well, hey. I noticed it before that. Really? Yeah. Because I know it sparkles. Well, there's a, there, yeah, there's a part where where the X Blade, for people that know X Blade and Brass Body is played by Bautista, yeah. are fighting in the that town. That threw me off. That really yeah. threw me off. And he pulls something. And because X Blade has superhuman powers out of nowhere, knocks the whole roof on top of him. Oh yeah, and yeah. When he looks up, it glimmers. Oh, I, I didn't catch that. that. Yeah. You're right though. I didn't see, um, and I know what scene you're talking about, but I didn't catch the yeah. the glimmer. And it made no sense how you got to that section of the movie. You know, they they didn't explain why he had superpowers out of anybody. You know, um, that didn't make I guess sense. he had the points. You know, Riza tried to explain. About the inanimate objects with his eyes. No, fist. I don't think that had anything to do with him. I think he was, <coughs> that's the problem is that he never really. And the thing there is, was he a lot looked, of problems. He looked so cool when he was brass body that it didn't oh, make sense yeah. that every time, back to him every normal. time he would stop fighting, he, he would, would go, go back. back. And then once he got it attacked, really then he annoying, would go yeah. back. And then, and then he, that sound that it would make when he would go back it was just annoying because. Every second he got punched, he had to go back and then flash back and then oh back to normal and then back again. Yeah, I was really thinking. It kind of reminded me of the X Men um, when you have Colossus. Colossus yeah. yeah, and I was thinking the same thing. Like, wait, that looks cool. Leave him like Brass Body. Why would he? I mean, why wouldn't you introduce him just as Brass Body and it, it, and just keep him like that through the whole movie? Well, I mean, even if he was normal, because that was the surprise. Oh, he turns into a Brass Body. But like you said, the whole fighting sequence, he should have stayed. It's kind of like body. It, the perfect example was if it was the Hulk fighting. 
And but when he stopped fighting for just a split second, he would turn back to Bruce, Bruce Banner. Banner. Yeah. yeah, and that's really frustrating. Yeah. And it looks ugly. Like it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, it look didn't, appealing. And yeah. it didn't click. And it, I don't want to see Bautista. And they put a lot of money in it. Oh yeah. And I was like, they should have just kept him as brass body. When Maybe they fighting. could only afford to put him as brass body sometimes. <laughs> And they couldn't afford the rest of the yeah. time. So it doesn't make this, this. The movie doesn't make a lot of sense, and it, yeah. it was a little bit upsetting. And I don't want to knock anybody because I've tried making little movies by myself, and I know it's very hard and complicated. But I don't have a Hollywood production <laughs> that's that's supporting me behind either. So this is what I told um, Hector. What I think happened is, I think it kind of reminds me. A few years back, you had Frank Miller that did the Spirit. Frank Miller was on the set of Sin City when uh, the Rodriguez yeah. was was doing it, and right? he's actually back again for Sin City too. They just finished. Oh yeah, the that's right. Fight. Since Rodriguez is though. Yes. Yeah. But Frank Miller's always standing behind him. Oh, well, that's good. He can stand behind like him all he wants. I don't, don't care as long as he doesn't have anything to do he's with it. He's fucking strange looking, weird guy. Yeah, but we're not, we're not gonna get <laughs> into sorry. that right now. But it's like, tricks. No, but you know, um, and the same thing. Frank Miller saw how a movie was made, said, "Hey, I can do this," yeah. and he goes and does the spirit. Now, this is Will Eisner's The Spirit. Everybody knows it. it's a very famous comic. It's something that like elevated comics to like a literary level. You know that that and changed the, the idea. Made it and the movie was horrible. Yeah, I was like, why would you do that? Like, you knew he wanted, to, he had good intentions, but Rome wasn't built on good intentions. Who made Three Hundred? Oh, that's the other guy I don't like. It's um, the guy who did Watchmen. Uh, yeah. uh, that was another movie. He yeah. didn't do Immortals, but he did do he did Watchmen, and then he did. Frank the, Miller did Immortals, right? Or was it somebody else? No, that was someone else. Who the hell? Sucker Punch. He also did. Who the hell has these three directors that have the same style of movies and think they're going to be successful without doing it again? Because when you look at Immortals, you're like, oh, 300. Oh, wait, no. Uh, the Watchmen. It has that same feel. Man, I can't think of it. I'm looking it up right now. <coughs> okay. And so back to uh, the Man with, with the that. Iron Fist. The other hokey part was, uh, there's a part where... Wait, what does Iron Fist tell him about you? As Iron Fist looked styrofoam after they put him on. It looked completely... It didn't look... Zack Snyder. Oh, there you go. Zack Snyder, sorry, okay. It, you know what, though? Zack Snyder's actually making the Superman movie. I know, I'm not happy about that. I haven't liked, I haven't liked a single Zack Snyder film I saw, because he did Sucker Who Punch, too. Zack Snyder, anyways? How, where did he come from? Uh, I'm not sure, but 300 was his first movie. Almost all his movies are based off of the, the green oh. background, you know... Uh, yeah, I don't effects. like... I didn't like... Um, I didn't like 300. I was not impressed with 300. Yeah, I wasn't either. <coughs> and okay, the same so thing with Iron Fist. Um, Immortals was made by Tarsim Singh. But they all look like a Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, I don't have no idea who that person even is. I wonder if it's a certain company that likes to keep that look for each film. So they had an Indian guy do Immortals. Oh, he, did the, he did The Cell. Really? I like that one. Yeah. The South's kind of a cool movie. It is. I remember seeing that in theaters. He's only done five movies, so let me name the five movies real quick. His first movie was The South, which I, I did like. Then he did The Fall. I don't know that. I don't know either. And then he did Immortals. And then he did Mirror Mirror, the last one with Julie Roberts. So it looks like he might be starting to do more movies now, yeah. this guy. Okay, so the, the Iron Fist looked like crap. We both agree. Rizzo kept on doing this thing where he would pound his fist. Yeah. The first time he did it, I was like, okay, that looks really cheesy. I hope you don't do it again. And like about five minutes later, he does it again. Like, we're going to go get him, guys. And then he goes like that. And, he and then he's like, we're ready to bust some heads. And then he goes like that again. What, like, what made me pissed off is that everybody knows that Rizzo is a huge samurai kung fu flick yeah, but, fanatic. Yeah. yeah. And to make this, it didn't make any sense. Like... They're giving you the money. They're giving you the expenses. Why don't you pay for? You know, it had to be his ego. It had to be his ego. Why? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they get be like, hey, you know, the guys who did Crossing Tigers and the Matrix? Maybe we should get those guys to choreograph the our fighting scenes. Well, you know that the last main scene, the, so the big fight scene was supposed to be between Riza and Bautista. Yeah. And that's a horrible fight scene. Like yeah. neither one of them really can fight martial arts. And so I'm thinking, I'm like, why would you even do this? Like. Bautista does this thing, and he's like, 
the tiger style. I didn't notice that as tiger style. I know what tiger Just style is. Just because he put his palm up like this. Yeah, that's not tiger style. Yeah. This is not tiger style. <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he, was, he was fucking defending himself. He went, ah, like this. is like, oh, tiger style. Did you not think the same thing? Like, yeah. what the hell is that? That's not tiger style. I've seen, like, I've seen, I love Jim Lee's fearless. And what the hell, what would rat, be, rat style be? Because they had the rodents had their own. I don't know. But I know that when they, like, Jet Li's fearless, when they did tiger style, I mean, they do a whole, yeah, I mean, the, whole yeah. Thing. And then, then what does RZA come back with? Iron Fist style? I mean, and then he doesn't... I was thinking, at least if he knew how to box. When he, I started seeing him swing his fist, yeah. I was like, oh, this guy has no stance. He has nothing. Like, you know, why would you even, why would you even think, I'm going to be the main guy to take down this big guy, and I'm going to be able to beat him up? Like, that made yeah. no sense whatsoever, you know? So that was really disappointing. And I mean, there was a lot the, the of disappointing names. The names were things. fucking horrible. And you got Golden Lion... Uh, and then so people don't confuse Silver Lion. Silver Lion and then Bronze Lion. And Bronze Lion was played by Chung Lee, who is a UFC fighter. Oh, okay. So he was a UFC fighter. You were thinking there was a Silver UFC, Lion? Uh, Bronze Lion. Oh, that's a UFC yeah. fighter? And for people that don't know the lions, the lions look like they fucking escaped out of a uh, hair hairstyle well, 80s uh, rock band. What, what it is is I showed Hector um, and, you know... A, a little earlier, there was a video game called Brutal Legend, and it was famous because it's by a guy named, uh, I want to say his first name is Rob, I'm not sure, uh, Schaefer though is the last name, mm -hmm. so it's like Rob Schaefer, Schaefer for sure, he does, uh, and then one of the main characters in Brutal Legend is Lion White, and Lion White is the one who's fighting Jack Black, that's the video game where Jack Black gets sucked into this other world, and it's about rock gods, and so Lion White has the hair, he's named Lion White, and he has this big old crazy hairdo from the 80s, so that reminded me a lot of Brutal Legend. Every time I saw the guy come out, I go, this is like Brutal Legend. This is Brutal Legend. And they look like midgets, too, because of the hair is so big. Because if, if, you play, if you play the video game, that's how it, it looks like, too. I was like, this is like the video game. And then, of course, um, I compared it. I, I, I showed that there's a few movies out there that are really cheesy like this. One is The Butcher, The Chef, and The Swordsman. I just saw it like yeah. two or three nights ago. Horrible movie. Almost the same kind of style. Um, Samurai Fiction came out in 98, and I told you it's the same theme. It's not very good, and it's really cheesy. Of course, that's a samurai movie. Um, and then the other thing was I told, like, every time I saw, like, the death sequences, it reminded me of Mortal Kombat. Like, yeah. there's this one where Riz goes, <laughs> and he does an uppercut to someone, and he knocks someone's head off. I was like, they just ripped off Mortal Kombat. That's a fatality. I know what that you, is. You were saying about the one with Jack Knife, the Russell Crowe character in the... He, yeah, he gets the... The Emperor, what the, is the, the dagger, something yeah, dagger. Poison Dagger. Poison Dagger, that's his name, Poison Dagger. Because he throws... Poison daggers. <laughs> poison daggers. No, he actually throws little uh, poison sticks and at people. And the Geminis, in case you didn't know, is because they're like yin yang. They're twins, they're I think twins. they said. Yeah, they're and, twins. Yeah, they fight together, like basically humping each other while they're shooting. Yeah, that was so stupid. Yeah. Come on, every time he had a so every time he had to shoot the gun that's connected to her leg, he had to spin her around. And had to put her crotch next to her face, but they're brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, it was really weird. I was like, come on. And there's a lot of ass play in this movie. Yeah. With Jack Knife. Uh, yeah. He was pulling out anal beads with his mouth. Yes. Out of the water. Weird, yeah. It weird, was a weird movie. It was. I but Russell like... Crowe, that's the only part that I would actually like look forward to the whole fucking movie. Is Every time he came out. Russell Crowe. Because he knew he was a stupid character, but he played that stupid character to its <laughs> To its glory. Yeah. He, uh, he did. Every time he came out. And he... Lucy Liu too. Or uh, is it Lucy Liu? Yeah, you know what though? I wasn't as impressed as I was for no, Kill Bill. No, because you've seen her in Kill Bill, and you expect a lot more from her. Yeah, I think that's what it was, was I wanted... Uh, Yoshi or Ren, or what? Is that yeah, something? Yoshi, yeah, yeah. And that's like, a badass character. Where she's half Japanese, half, half Chinese. And the little cartoon that goes with it. Yeah, and see, me and, me and George, we, we really did try to like this movie. Yeah. And gave it a chance, but... That you can only give so much well, see, The trainer on that, like her fighting <coughs> sequence, when all those girls come down and then mm -hmm. they're, they're throwing out like their claws, yeah. I thought that was going to be really cool. It kind of reminded me of, uh, did you ever see um, House of Flying Daggers? Yeah. Okay, do you remember that sequence where they're throwing the beads and she has to And that's hit the thing with, with the... Quentin Tarantino, I was telling you. Uh, Iron Monkey was made by, uh, oh, yeah. was produced by Quentin Tarantino. And that's a great fucking kung fu movie. Yeah, it is. And it's like, wouldn't you think, like, if you're a real true friend to RZA, you'd be like, you know what? Let's get the choreographer or the director from Iron Monkey. Yeah. Let's take your story. I mean, all he has to say is written by RZA. That would have been fine with oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Let him and play a small cameo, not the whole movie, yeah. not the major role. Do what he always does, just play some yeah, kind of. I felt bad like for Riza too because you can tell he was no, don't trying. Feel bad. Don't he, feel no, bad. he was trying to act, but he doesn't have the. Why do you feel bad for him for her? Just because he was trying. I mean, like you said, there should have been some. Someone, I bet you anything. Someone somebody told should you, have said dude, something. No, I bet you someone did tell her, dude. You suck. So, 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 the song was on there. Oh, the first, okay. That's the only thing that I actually did like. The soundtrack. About. The soundtrack is great. Soundtrack. The soundtrack is good. And but it, it's all hip hop. Yeah, but it's it has that. Hip-hop. It has that Asian theme, like he did for. No, no, no. He did this one different because um, on on Kill Bill, he did he did stuff that was only instrumental. You yeah. know, like where every time when she would say but someone that even for the hip hop, even for the hip hop, it did go well with the movie. Sadly. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it did. I yeah. mean, it, I like. I would probably get the, the soundtrack. soundtrack. I yeah. thought the same thing. I was like, you know what? This soundtrack. Yeah, it's really like Kanye good. West, and it, he's doing like a love song, and it's for a love sequel. Oh, is that? Uh, I mean, Kanye West? I think he spent more time on the soundtrack on that fucking soundtrack than what he did with that movie. That's what he does. And it it fucking music. irritated me. Yeah, I hope this movie is a big flop, and this way he doesn't do it again. Like I really, I was, I, I feel bad, but it's like you know. He, I don't want to see two years. We're going to fucking see a Quentin Tarantino movie. And the trailer for Man with the Iron Fist 2 comes out. Yeah. Or maybe this time something happens and it's the Man with the Golden Fist. I don't know. The yeah, Man with the Golden And the, they should get a golden you know shower for that one. They, they had a... Um, man, that story had so much potential. It had so There's much potential. There's fucking loopholes in it. Yeah. All, all over the place. Plot holes. <coughs> we, I mean, we didn't know which way the movie was going. And then again, look at it. It's Eli Roth. I mean, hostile movies don't make a lot of fucking sense either. They're all over the place. So that's a, so there was a lot of gore in this movie. Yeah. A lot of gore. Like Extreme there was, gore. Yeah, there was... Overdone gore. There's a part yeah, where... Yeah, there was... <laughs> Russell Crowe walks into the Lotus Flower Temple or House of Lotus. Pink Pink Lotus. Uh, pink Blossoms. Pink that's Blossoms. That's Pink Blossoms. He goes in there and he wants like a, a crazy certain... Hippo. A certain... Yeah, a certain uh, concubine. Yeah. And so he's like... That is, he's like, my name is the Crazy Hippo and you can't have her. And what does he do? He fucking basically surgically removes his thorax from his uh, chest. He rips it open yeah, and it opens does. up. Yeah, yeah. He's like, At least they didn't... They, I thought they were going to show close-ups of them. They didn't. So that was kind of cool. But I was like, man, this is getting... And it made no sense why he had to just slice them up like that. Yeah, and everybody was cool with it around them. Like, yeah. you know, he just gave away his... Secret. That's kind of like That's actually a secret, though, that like in a movie like this, you want to hold to the end because it's like, oh, you don't know why he's Mr. Knife. Oh, he's Mr. Knife. Why? Oh, I don't know. Like he, he I just hear he's crazy. Right. Yeah, you know. So he wants to keep that a secret. He might he stab someone. Him. Yeah, he does. So he likes knifing him. But he, so he did say he <laughs> executed his lines good because at that part, that's where he does the whole line, where she says, um, you know, uh, where uh, Lucy Liu tries to explain to Mister Knife, oh, you know, uh, he's that girl. She's with the customer though, and he goes, you're right. But she's with the wrong customer. Yeah. And the way he says it is perfect. It's yeah, like, man, that's, that's so thing, good. That's the thing. Like, he said it's anything, so good. If anything else you can have is a bunch of one-liners from Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah. he was like, you're right. Because yeah. everything but he she's said... she's with the wrong customer, yeah. man. That anything was, that he was said in that whole movie was one-liners. Yeah, it was. And I don't know if Russell Crowe needs money, or I don't know what's going on with No, Russell I think he might have been excited for this movie. Because it had Quentin's name on it. Well, I think, you know, I think they get tired of doing the same thing they yeah. always do. You know, the gladiator. Really? Lucy Lewis in it. It's kind of like the same shit. No, she, she needs the job. No, yeah. Nobody else hires her. Even though I think she's a good actress. I don't know, you yeah. know. I, I think she's an aging actress, and a lot of people don't like that. Now. Not only is she aging, but she's Asian. And that's hard. Aging Asian. Yeah, aging Asian. That should Asian. be a rock band. No, say that. Try to say that five times fast. Aging Asian. I yeah. can't even say that. <laughs> and, and that's the truth, though. I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, look at how hard it is even for Latinos, as they say, yeah. to get in the movie. Uh, Jackie Chan, when's the last movie we've seen Jackie Chan in? Oh, but you know, because he can't do those stunts anymore. He's, he's said it. I mean, he's old now, you know? Yeah, but even he's funny, though. That's the one thing that he does have. <laughs> he does have comedy style. I think the last movie he did. Uh, was it High Noon Part 2? And then he was a certain voice on the Kung Fu Panda movies, I know that. Oh, wait, yeah, that's right. So yeah. then, uh, Kung Fu Panda So I think he's just two. doing more voiceover, which would be horrible. Because he, he did Karate Kid. understand what he's saying. He did Karate Kid. 
And that's what I mean. I mean, I don't like the Karate Kid movie. I don't like the Karate Kid. That shouldn't even be Karate Kid. Yeah. Karate Kid is Japanese. But I did, I do like, I did like Jackie Chan in that movie because he just, it does show his uh, acting chops in that one. Yeah, and I, um, I recently <coughs> saw, what was it? I recently saw. He could have um, did that with the Iron Fist because those stunts were fucking ridiculous and horrible. He could have actually. Yeah. He and, and he, he should just have. fly in the air with a wire like this for a couple seconds and land back down. And everybody. But he should have been the person to be like the Buddhist that was teaching the man with the iron fist like things, which he apparently didn't learn at all. Um, the last thing he did was Super Cop Four. <laughs> He's done 113 things. Oh, well, actually, this year he just came out on a movie called Chinese Zodiac. Last year he came out on a foreign movie called 1911. So he's been... Oh, that's right. I remember the trailers for that movie. Oh, you know what? So last year he did three things. And one of them I did see. So he did Kung Fu Panda 2. I didn't see that. But you're right. He did the Kung yeah. Fu Panda. He's the monkey. Yeah. Oh, and that's then, right. That's a, And he did Shaolin. Did you ever see Shaolin? No. I love Shaolin. So that's a good martial... Okay, so if you want to see a good martial arts film, it came out last year. It was called Shaolin. It's a foreign mm -hmm. film. I got to see that one. My buddy, uh, he downloaded it. Illegally. <laughs> oh no. The, but the reason is because I couldn't, I was trying to get it. Some of these movies are really hard to find. And well, now you can get it. Now you can get it. But at the time, I was like, dude, I'm trying to see this movie. I can't get it in theaters. So he did me the favor and he downloaded it. So I went to his house and we saw it on his, on his map. So um, I was trying to show George because I'm like a huge kind of, he likes kung fu movies and that. And I like the other spectrum of Asian movies. I like the horror movies. I like the gorephobia movies that they have. But I'm a, a huge fan of Tashaki Mike, and his last name is spelled M I I K E. If you just put that, you can find all his movies. He did a movie that scares me to this day about Asian women called Edition. I'd highly recommend see that movie if you haven't seen it. But he did a movie called uh, Suzuki Western Dango. Uh, his most famous movie, though, I will say. Oh and, yeah. And that's how I knew when um, when you talked about him was Ishii. Ichi the Killer is one of my favorite movies as that well. That is his most famous movie, I think. And so, um, the Susa uh, Susaki Western Dango... Chinese Zodiac will come out December 12th. ...is, uh, is so a movie that out. he did, and so, like, it's a conceptual... Is it conceptual? Conceptual movie. Conceptual? Wait, what are yeah, you talking about? Is this sexual? <laughs> no, not sexual. But this movie is, uh, it's kind of a taken... Okay, let me describe the movie. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, I think, presents it as well. I think he's one of the... Yeah, he was on the trailer. He was on the trailer. And in the beginning of the movie, he talks about these two, uh, this Western clan of things. So what they do with this movie, and I like the movie. The movie's really cheesy and fun, and I thought Riza got the idea from this movie, is that the movie is done like Nevada and Utah and all that in the States. But the States look like ancient China, uh, Japan. And the cowboys are dressed like samurais, but they still have the cowboy boots, and they have guns and samurai swords, and they speak like John Wayne and Charles Bronson from the old Spaghetti Western movies. It's one of the funnest movies to watch, and it's funny to watch the movie, how it plays, and it's a fun movie to watch. And I really, when I saw Man with the Iron Fist, it's like, oh, he's trying to make a Western movie, too, because I, I saw Russell Crowe right off the bat, I was like, uh, I wonder if he's yeah, trying to do something like right. Western with a little bit of Kung Fu. I was like, oh, he's, he must have seen Suzuki Western Tango. So that's the thing about Russell Crowe, too. Is that the whole time I thought he was a Westerner. And he's a... Fr he's a... He's an Englishman. Englishman. But not only is he an Englishman, because from the trailer, I thought he carried a gun. I yeah. thought he was the only one who carried a gun. He don't carry no gun. He carries a gun. No, he carries a knife. A knife gun. <laughs> he shot the he shot the guy with the, the gun. Yeah, but like like blades come out of it. <coughs> Do they? Yeah, you see it when when he holds. I see it doesn't make little trend. The time thing. period doesn't make sense because then he um, for people that don't know is uh, man with iron fist comes from the United States where his slavery where his mom was having a, having an affair with a white slave, sl slave oh, owner yeah. master and he signs his life to be pardoned and comes escaping um, slavery from the United States. Yeah. So the time period is way off on this movie. Yeah, everything is, is all mixed up. Because they had guns, but why are guns not shooting <laughs> knives? I, you know, I, I, I didn't understand. I think they just wanted to make a cool looking weapon. And so his, his weapon it has a knife on each side and it has this little circle thing. Yeah. It was a little circle thing. I'm almost positive that and he I thought he was off. an Englishman and then his name was Jack. And I was like, I wonder if his last name is The Ripper. And oh, then it was Jack Knight. you know, I didn't even catch that. Yeah. I guess it, it, 
He technically, it could be the way he was ripping people apart. Because he, he said, "Because uh, there's another part where he shoots it, but yeah. when he shoots it, if you see it, it's not a bullet hole; it's like a little straight line." Oh, uh, and, and he said to to the to Lucy Liu, "What if?" Uh, he said, "I always carry a knife to a gunfight." Yeah, and but remember when he told Lucy Liu, he said, uh, "After I'm done having uh, fun with your ladies, why don't I go ahead and rip them in half?" Oh yeah. And he said, "If you do that, and grabs his balls and yeah, but she says, she goes, you hurt my girls, I'll, I'll hurt your boys.'" boys. Yeah. Yeah. Really cheesy middle yeah. school writing on that <laughs> one. <laughs> it, it definitely was. Uh, so, in the end, George, would you recommend this no, movie to anybody? I, I, I do not recommend it at all. And, like, me it, and George did. I, you know, I don't even know if it's really... It's like The Butcher, The Chef, and The Swordsman. I really wish I never saw that movie. Because it just took <laughs> my time. Like, in the end, I think mm -hmm. it was... If you're going to try to watch this... Get it when you're bored on Netflix, when yeah. it's available to stream, and you can be on the internet at the same time. The only thing I'm very happy about us watching the movie is we actually did a podcast because me and him basically watched it at the same time. I watched it at 1.30, you watched it at... Uh, 12.20. So there is no time of here. warning each other not to watch this movie. Yeah, I if wish one of us would have told me. If one of us watched it... No, that's a lie. If I were to tell you not to watch the movie, you'd still watch the dumb movie. I probably wouldn't have. Really? No, because, you know, um, Dave... Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. There's too many fucking Daves now. Dave from Pro Wings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave. I said, hey, I said, did you? I was like, I don't know. George wants to watch it in Fresno. Did you want to watch it here? And half. But he's like, fuck that thing. That shit looks cheesy. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's supposed to be cheesy. And he's like, no. Nah. He's like, trust me. And he's like, trust me. This movie looks fucking cheesy. And he was fucking right. You know what? But, you know, a lot of people say that. And I mean, like we just said, there's a lot of movies that come off. I like movies. I don't mind it being cheesy. I mean, sometimes I like to be taken away to a place that doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. And have that fun. Oh, I know it's going to be hokey, but it's... I mean... You know what? And Glorious like, Bastards is a, is a great point of view. You know it's, it's fictitious. You know oh, it's yeah. kind of silly. But it was still one of those movies that I enjoyed. You know what's a, another <coughs> one was... Uh, I think... Sorry about the cough. I'm a little bit under the weather. Yeah, just don't get me sick. I think it was... a. Uh, I can't remember if it was called Forbidden Kingdom, but it was something Kingdom. Was it? Mm -hmm. It's the one with Jackie Chan and Jet Li where they come out. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, and that's that's like a kid film, and the yeah. same thing. It's kind of cheesy, you know. I mean, Jackie. I mean, Jet Li plays this monkey, and he's dressed up as a monkey, and he's jumping around. Remember, because it's the the magical staff. Yeah. And the magical staff. Yeah, that you know, movie. You know, but as, as as cheesy as it was, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Because of the way they they uh, played the story out. The yeah, way there's they some movies that yeah. like you will look at it and people will be like. Well, that's a stupid movie. Where are you going to watch that? It makes no sense. And the but fighting in there, the choreography is great. I mean, the fight sequence, that's the only movie where they have Jet Li fighting Jackie Chan. It's the only movie. The one thing, well, no, that I, that I looked and I liked about Man with the Iron Fist is the little homage they do to Bruce Lee when he goes into the, the mirrors. The mirrors. Yeah. And it was exactly... The, the dragon. It was exactly the same style of the mirrors. But you know what though? I just felt like he was ripping a bunch of people off. Because not only that, but... That's the, true because it would if it wouldn't have been an Silver mind, Lion, look at how he fights. Yeah. He has those claws, almost like the guy on Enter the Dragon did. Yeah. Remember he had claws. What? And he cuts there's a, the up. There's a reason. There's sometimes where you want to do an homage to a movie, and that's fine. Yeah, but I told you there was so many things that looked like he took from somewhere else. Where I was well, like, he he watched a lot of uh, kung fu movies. Yeah, but the whole thing was for him to try to. And I, I, I know a lot of my friends. Scenes. A lot of my friends who were like huge Bruce Lee fans, and they tried to support this movie, and they'll be like, oh well, because yeah. they they said it before I seen it. They're like, well, I could see. I can see why people don't like it, but it, it takes me back to the old day movies. I was like, no, when I'm watching this, I was like, no, those movies in the back were fucking badass. I like The Magnificent Seven, who, who, who never seen Magnificent Seven. It's a cowboy movie, but if you don't know, it's actually another, it's a samurai movie called The Magnificent, uh, what is it? No, the Seven not, Samurais. Yeah, Seven Samurais. Seven Samurai. It's the exact same story. They Have you ever seen Seven Samurai, Samurai though? Hmm? I thought you said you didn't see Seven, Seven Samurai. I, I finally watched it. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was... You still haven't seen your Jimbo, though. No. Oh, okay. That one's and really so, good, And so, I saw this movie, and yeah, it's hokey, and you can see some of the, the fight, yeah. but the story is there. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It, I mean, come on, it made such a huge impact for an American to actually get this movie and then turn it into a cowboy movie. Well, you know, um, if you want to pay a homage to, like, let's say, a Bruce Lee movie... Uh, Tarantino is a perfect example because in Kill Bill, that's why she has that yellow jumpsuit. Or Death Proof. When Death Proof is uh, Cannonball Run. If nobody's seen Cannonball Run, you look confused. I highly suggest you look 
try to figure out where to find it. Cannonball Run's like a great chasing movie, and that movie is a solid homage. Uh, Death Proof is a solid homage to, to Cannonball oh, okay. Run. So we're going to have to start wrapping things up. It's really getting kind of late for this podcast. Uh, a little bit more than we normally do. We're supposed to eventually like, have a theme like we normally do. We didn't run with that. I guess uh, I thought we were doing it. Hector said I didn't give him enough time. I don't know how much research he needs to do, even though he knows so much about the damn subject. And, uh, you know, Halloween just passed. It's the Day of the Dead. Both our birthdays but we passed. Kinda, we kind of did older. talk about horror and rides and stuff. So, like, so <laughs> maybe maybe we can do that during uh, Christmas. Maybe that'll be our, our Christmas special. <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> See, we're killing for Christmas? We have to have some sort of... Uh, that will be the Christmas special. Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> you know? Uh, they, hey, man. They're, you know, they did... I'm going to find things. an artist to go ahead and uh, draw us a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy sharing cookies underneath. You know what? I bet you anything that was a serial killer who dressed up like a Santa Claus. Probably John Wayne Gacy. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but I'm saying, I should find an artist and we can put it on our album cover of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy eating cookies in front of a, a fire waiting for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> One of them should be an elf. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to wrap it up. We're not sure what the next one's going to be about. It's going to be a lot sooner. I think we just might start doing it more like well, this, more free-flowing. And we'll no, definitely have November 6th comes... And maybe we'll have enough information because uh, Tuesday is the last day to vote. We'll have a new president. Oh, that's right. We so, did. And I think... <clears throat> that's if funny. anything else, if we don't if we don't get together, we'll probably do a quick VS Skype one. Yeah, and that's when we're going to experiment. We're going to try a different yeah. way to do the podcast. So we're going to have this show a lot more frequently. We'll have it off and on. We'll test different little pathways to do and it. And we'll probably definitely do the, uh, the politics side again. And if you're tired of it, so are we. But it's something, unfortunately, we, we have might to go through. We might just ask Dave to come by or do We Skype. have to vote. <laughs> I haven't, this is bad. I've never voted. So I never, have to vote. Ever, yeah. ever? You know, the first time I could vote <laughs> was the day I turned 18 mm-hmm. was the same day voting took place. The oh, same wow. exact day. I was like, man, today's my birthday. I can go vote for my birthday. But the reason why I didn't, I couldn't find where the fuck I was supposed to vote. I got a, I got a, a, a ballot somewhere. You know, they sent it to you in the mail and you're only allowed to go to the station where it tells you you can vote. I didn't know where it was at. So I never knew where to vote. Like, I didn't know where I was supposed to go vote. So... For people that don't know, I want to tell you happy belated birthday. And you too. Happy and birthday. me as well. And I guess... I think I told you the day after, though. There, well, I told you late at night. I told you like at 11 o'clock. Yeah, and I Facebook. haven't been on Facebook lately, so I, I completely am a bad friend. Uh, Hector's been an a anti-internet. <laughs> anti-internet, anti-government, uh, anti-everything, I guess. Um, my it's, thing is, uh, I guess we're both Scorpios, and I yes, guess we're we not supposed to blend or... Yeah, it's probably why we don't see each other very much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. we're so... Yeah, we are both Scorpios. Uh, okay, so... We're only like, I think, five days, six days apart. When's your birthday? November 1st? Second. Second. I don't know that shit. Now. Because remember, it's like your birthday, Nikki's birthday, and someone else's, isn't it? You hear my voice? Like, I'm already ready. There's like... Nikki's three... birthday. No, wait, well, whose birthday? I thought there was like three birthdays in a row, with yours included. That's, that's another story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so we'll wrap it up. Aurora's birthday.